Now next, I'd like to invite up uh, TJ Hankin. I met him about 20 years ago working out at the camp. Um, he's become a good friend and uh, family, and uh, along with his wife, Dina, and one of their kids. And so we'll invite him to share about his ministry. Well, good morning. It's a privilege to be here with you this morning um, up in this area. This is the first time to come up in this area of Iowa. Um, my wife and I and our daughter are here, Kiri, and my wife, Dina. Uh, we have five other children back home, and uh, they began at age 24 to 30. And uh, Kiri is a little eight-year-old, uh, so we have a big gap there. But uh, we have eight grandchildren uh, from Applington, which I don't know if you guys know where Applington is, west of Cedar Falls. Uh, a little ways, and we actually moved to Applington in, in 2000, where I took a youth pastor at a NAB jo church, which is which is what connected us to camp, which is what helped us to meet Dave, and, and so we're thankful for Dave for inviting us to be here to share with you about our ministry called Resourcing Now, and I love coming to the church for the first time because we get to tell the story of Resourcing Now. Um, hopefully I can make this work here. Oops, let me go back up one there to that one. And just as we share, just so you know that uh, I don't have any uh, brochures or flyers or anything here, but uh, if you're interested in getting more information or being on the mailing list of Resourcing Now, just uh, you can shoot me a message at resourcingnow at gmail.com um, or PO Box 295 Applington, and we're happy uh, to, to add you to your list. We don't send out a lot of stuff and nothing really formal, just a lot of times just informal emails and, and every so often uh, a newsletter just to update people who don't have email. Um, but it's fun to come to share uh, the story of, of how the work began. And, uh, and just so you know, as uh, we started in ministry in, in 1993 as a youth pastor in Kansas and moved to I Applington, Iowa in 2000, and were there for nine years. And then uh, we moved to Guatemala. At that time, we just had the five children. And uh, so all seven of us, along with another family, moved to Guatemala to serve. Um, I was going to be a teacher at the Christian Academy of Guatemala. Uh, in, um, in Guatemala City, and, and while we were there, we just really began to see, uh, just through relationships, the need for Christian literature. I mean, we were meeting pastors who just had an old tattered Bible, Sunday school teachers who had no resources, evangelists who didn't have any material to, to really use to evangelize, and, and, um, and so we had a relationship with a ministry called Love Packages down in Butler, Illinois. As a youth pastor, we would take teams there every year and sometimes a couple times a year. And Love Packages receives and collects Christian literature from all over the United States, used literature, unwanted literature, uh, unsold literature, and they pack it up all nicely, and they stick it on a container, and they ship it overseas to different countries. And so I contacted Love Packages. They said, hey, we're down in Guatemala. Uh, what do you have for Spanish material? And, and after some conversations, he said, well, I can put together a Spanish container of literature if you want to receive it in Guatemala. And at that time, you know, we had no idea the international shipping of containers. How do we receive it? Where do we put it? What do we do with customs? We need a broker. We knew none of that. But I just believed that this is what God wanted us to do. And I said, all right, Steve, I love packages. Send me the container. We'll work out the details. And, uh, and the Lord was able to work out the details. And so on September, actually 18th, 2010, uh, as we were living and working in Guatemala, uh, this 20-ton container a Spanish Christian literature arrived at a warehouse in Villanueva, Linda Vista, Villanueva, Guatemala, this little building that we rented. And, and that's a picture of us signing for it and unloading it. And little did we know what was going to happen at that moment uh, for us. And, uh, and uh, so we received the container. We began to distribute the literature. And, and man, people just were so excited. I remember when we unloaded the container into the warehouse, uh, a, a man stood beside me, and we looked at this mound of material. Um, and I don't know if you can picture 20 tons of uh, Christian literature piled up, but it's it's 28 pallets, you know, this high. And uh, and he looked at us, and just in tears, he said, "This is nothing short of a miracle, TJ." And and that's just been the heart and attitude of everyone that we've spoke with since then. And and so we moved back to Iowa. In 2011, we were just there for a couple years, and I took a job as an associate pastor at a church in Parkersburg, Iowa, just four miles away from Applington. So we went from Applington to Guatemala and right back to Applington and worked at a church in Parkersburg. And, and as we were working, Love Packages called us within a couple months of getting back, and he said, TJ, we got another container of literature. Uh, would you take it to Guatemala? 
uh, Spanish literature. And so we talked to the church, and they said, yeah, go ahead and go. And, uh, and so we sent it to Guatemala. I went down there when the container was there, spent a couple weeks. We distributed the material as quick as we could and, uh, and got it out and came back and said, that was really cool. A couple months later, Love Package is called again. So TJ, we got, a, we got another Spanish container. Can you take it to Guatemala? And I'm like, oh, man, I don't know. So I went to the church. I said, can I go back to Guatemala? I'll take some people from the church. We'll make it a mission trip. And, uh, and they said, yeah, go. And, and so they sent it. We went back to Guatemala again, and we distributed the literature. It had a great time with the team from the community. And then a few months later, Love Package was called. I said, we got another Spanish container. Would you be willing to take it to, park to, to, uh, to Guatemala? And at that point, we just realized that, I mean, we're like two years into being in Parkersburg, and we just begin to just pray and think, well, is the Lord wanting us to do something different? And, uh, and we felt that this is the direction God was leading us, and so we actually resigned from the church, and we started this ministry called Resourcing Now, not knowing, you know, what's going to happen um, with that because it's just with so many unanswered questions. Um, but I want to tell you, that was in 2013 that we officially started and since then, I think we're on container number 70 of Spanish and English Christian literature that we've been able to receive into. We've had literature into 21 different countries uh, throughout Central America and the Caribbean and even a little bit in Africa. And I would tell you, Love Packages ships all over the world English material. So it's not just us co cooperating with Love Packages, but that's how it began. And so I'm going to talk with you just how the process works of... Uh, of getting this literature. So Love Packages is located in Butler, Illinois. And there, like I said, all the material gets staged. And, uh, and so when I work with on my end, I'm always trying to find Spanish literature throughout the country, tracks and devotionals and things. And, and, and Love Packages collects from different publishing companies. They get material from David C. Cook, Lifeway, Billy Graham Association, Accent Ministries. All these ministries send their excess Sunday school material, devotionals, that is dated material, you know, like quarterly Sunday school material, and then whatever they don't sell within that quarter, they send it to love packages, and, and they get books and stuff all over the country gets sent to them. And then they package it all up nicely, and they load it onto a container. And this is one of our Spanish containers. I, don't, I think this one went to Costa Rica. That's me on the left. My son-in-law is two over to the right from me. And the rest of it is love packages team. And then they stick that on the container. And Love Packages actually will pay to ship it to wherever I send, ask them to. And, uh, and so, um, oops, i got to figure out how to go to the right direction. And it arrives like this, a 20-foot container into uh, the country that we happen to be working at. And uh, this is actually getting unloaded in our new warehouse in Guatemala. And we work with the, uh, the Christian and Missionary Alliance denomination in Guatemala. I'm not CMA. Um, I really love the denomination, but there just happen to be people there that we work with. Because every country that we enter uh, with the literature, we, we have a different contact, a different source. Sometimes it's CMA, sometimes it's Assembly of God, sometimes it's a Bible society, sometimes it's just a church and a pastor. It is wherever we can make connection with and in a foreign country, um, we do that. And this is our, uh, the other challenge is not only who do we work with, to get the material into that country is like, where are we going to put it? Because 20 tons of literature is a lot. And, uh, and so we have to have that connection with the warehouse. And so this is our little warehouse in Costa Rica. And I would say, when I say little, I mean, it's, it is the smallest warehouse we have. And it's actually, this is an outdoor theater, and that's a stage that they put a little wall in and in a door. And, uh, and the material comes in, and, and uh, we squeeze 20 tons of material in there, and it's stacked high, and we begin the process of doing distribution. And we just were in Costa Rica this year. Uh, we received one, and we've actually now had three, and we'll probably return to Costa Rica because it's really getting a great response from people there um, with the material. But this is a classic picture of what it looks like. When we do the distribution, we get the literature in, we try to organize it, we sort it, and we make it available to where we can begin to distribute it to individual churches for the most part. And, and I have on my phone, on my computer, hundreds and hundreds of pictures just like this where this is a pastor who shows up. He doesn't know what he's going to expect the first time. He just heard that we have some literature available, free literature, and really, really inexpensive Bibles, sometimes just to get a little bit of our own funds back. And, uh, and 
they open up the back of their truck or car or pickup or whatever it might be, and we bring in enough literature for them that uh, hopefully will help with their church and their outreach ministry. And this is just one pastor uh, in Panama who's getting a load of material there. And there's Bibles, there's Sunday school material, there's a study Bible, there's tracts, and it's just a nice assortment for them to begin to do ministry. And and we got to remember, we try to get this material to pastors in places that they have no resources whatsoever. I mean, we take for granted just this incredible uh, pool of material that we can get from, you know, Amazon. In two days, we can have it at our front door. We can call up a publishing company and have material. And, and they just don't have those resources. It's so expensive to ship literature and and uh, in small amounts and 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 when you get it into a country to try to purchase it is really expensive and and you don't know what it's all about and, and who's making it and so it's really difficult and so um man the pastors are just so thankful and so excited when they were able to receive material and another way we do is is we have a, if we have a mass distribution we'll we'll sit down in a room and we'll build 50, 100, sometimes I've even built 300 different individual piles or packets of material. And, uh, and we just try to make sure that every packet is identical. And you can see I, I get a little bit, uh, what's the word when you, you're too detailed? Yeah, something like that. Um, and I, every book has to be laid down on the pile just right so you never get confused with what pile has what. And, and so we have a team put together and then we put those in bags and then we just have, when a church shows up, we just hand them a bag and hand them a bag and, and get the material out the door that way. And, and, uh, and this is in southern Costa Rica, I believe, where we're doing uh, distribution here, putting together the material. But Guatemala has kind of been the, you know, the, the beginning of it all because that was our first shipment and our first several shipments went into Guatemala and we continue to, to, to ship into Guatemala. And from Guatemala, we've gone to Belize, El Salvador, Honduras, and into southern Mexico with the material. And, uh, and this is one of our main distributors. This is Nelson Morales. And I always just include a picture of him um, because he's such a blessing, he's such a hard worker, and he does so much of the material for us there. Uh, and this is this kind of uh, picture from last year. And it, I love this picture because it really kind of encapsulates the whole mentality of what we do because uh, we have my friend on the far right that's Stanley Romero from Guatemala and he travels with me to many of the countries to do the work and helps with translation then we have a young lady next to him who's from Panama and she was one of our connections in Panama doing distribution and then there's me from the states and this is a gentleman on the far left who who's living in Panama but he's from Venezuela and together we've been working just uh, just bringing this international team together and, and working on doing distribution and and with the gentleman on the left, we're able to send material from Panama on our last couple of shipments into Venezuela, which is very difficult to do. Uh, and, and it's very difficult to send from the United States to Venezuela. So we've been kind of backdooring it and getting Bibles and getting resources into people who have nothing in Venezuela. So in 2023, we shipped two containers to Panama, one to Costa Rica, one to Mexico, three to Guatemala, an English one to Trinidad, an English one to Belize, and then a container into Honduras. And we also brought in material directly uh, into Cuba. We didn't ship into Cuba because we can't do that from the States. And then we also indirectly sent material into Venezuela. And that's just last year. Just imagine every year as we, we've done this. And as we look into 2024, we um, got a container that'll arrive in about a week into Panama again. And with that material from Panama, we're gonna send it to the Amazon. We're gonna send it into Venezuela and hopefully maybe even to Cuba. We've already received to Costa Rica, but we plan to do these other countries again in 2024. And hopefully get into Guyana. We've shipped there before. And uh, my heart is really getting it into the places that just don't get anything. And in, and in Guyana, we're trying to raise the funds to go deep into Guyana with the material down the river basin uh, to get it down to villages who really have nothing. Uh, that's our desire. We also sell coffee to support our ministry. It helps pay for Bibles and stuff. And if you love coffee, uh, you can also contact us and we can help provide coffee for you uh, with that. It's uh, Full Circle Beans Coffee on a Mission. I just want to share one story here. I got just a little bit. Because uh, you get this big picture, this macro perspective of how we do it. You know, yeah, we ship 20 tons of material. It gets pastors take it. and uh, But I wish... 
I wish I could have more individual stories of how the, the literature impacts people and, and just even spend more time with that. But just on our last shipment to Panama, um, just a great story that we received just recently when I visited there actually two weeks ago. And I didn't realize this had taken place until he just shared it with me. But we sent the container into Panama. And we used to have just a handful of Bibles on each container back in the beginning. And we just started praying that God would provide more and more Bibles for us. And, and, and that is, God has answered that in such an incredible way where we've had up to 10, 15,000 Bibles on a container, which is just really unbelievable. Um, and this last container went into to Panama. We only had like 5,000 Bibles on there. And, and I was going to send most of those into Venezuela and because uh, a previous container into Panama had a lot of Bibles, and so we were able to share a lot of Bibles in Panama. And so I was hoping to get these into Venezuela. And, and so we were working on that slow process of, of having them pick it up, uh, a shipping company, and send it over. But, but um, after the container arrived, we set aside those Bibles. The church that we used as a little warehouse uh, had a service, and, and some men, some chaplain from the local prison came, and they heard about all this material that was at this church uh that was being distributed and and the pastor said one of the chaplains approached me in tears and he and he said we really desperately need bibles because in february of 2023 in the prison that they work at called la haya uh, in panama city which is one of the largest prisons in panama and panama has very bad prisons like many central america countries um one of the inmates shot and killed a guard a gunfight within the prison between gangs and a guard got shot. And so the guards responded by taking all of the inmates' possessions, clothes, books, Bibles, everything, and they burned it all as a punishment. And then they closed the prison so no one could come in there. And he said, we prayed and prayed that the Lord would open up an opportunity for us to get back into prison. And finally that happened, but then they wouldn't let us bring any resources in. And then when that finally opened up to bring resources, we, we had nothing. We realized everything was gone. And, uh, and they just said, is there any way we could tap into your Bibles? And so the church called us and said, hey, this is the situation. And, uh, and we were able to provide them 3,000 Bibles um, to bring into the prison. And that, they wanted 1,000 for this prison, but then they said, we'll take the other ones into the other prisons. And, and so that was the greatest encouragement on, uh, on that. And um, so this is what we do. We appreciate any of your prayers and support with this work. It's just really us. Um, and, and, and we just try to collaborate and cooperate with other entities to provide the literature, and we just continue to go wherever the Lord sends us. So that's our work with resourcing now. If you have more questions afterwards, I'd love to talk to you. Um, I think maybe the opportunity is later, so yep. thank, thank you. you.